This is the Woodland Beach Volunteer Firehouse in Edgewater. And here's the deal. If you're an opioid addict and you've decided today's the day, you need help now, you can walk into this firehouse or any other firehouse in any place in Anne Arundel County, and even if you've got drugs in your pocket and warrants hanging over your head, they will not call police. They came to the door. They will help you. They'll keep you safe here until someone comes and gets you into treatment on the spot. I could talk about it all day. I'm just really grateful for it. That's Tyler Edwards. He came here desperate on December 27th. He has not used opioids <laughs> since. Thank you guys so much. Great to see people come back because we don't know what happens when they leave here. You don't have to be scared of it. Just look at it as a good thing, because it is. It's the biggest public works project you've never heard of because it's underground. $2.7 billion to change the environment of the Anacostia River. We were lowered down by a crane in a steel cage deep under parking lot eight at RFK Stadium, a place that looks like it could be a silo for nuclear missiles or a secret government bunker. It's not. Instead, this is one of the grandest environmental jobs in the entire nation. The $2.7 billion Clean Rivers Project. It's the biggest environmental improvement to this river in the history of this river. This whole system's gonna act like a giant underground reservoir. It's gonna catch all the nasty contaminated storm water and the raw sewage that during storms has been dumping into the Anacostia River for more than a century. It won't work if you don't wear it. Julie Brown is the boating safety expert for the Maryland Natural Resources Police. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Ah. She demonstrated in a Help. pool today what it's like to try to get a life jacket on after things have gone bad. You're in a panic if you just went in the water, so trying to get a life jacket on is virtually impossible. Well, Julie and I were just talking, uh, a boater like me, I don't like the big life jackets because they're hot to wear, but look at this thing. It's lightweight. It's not hot at all, and if you fall in the water, it'll automatically save your life. Well, they may have had watch parties for the Comey hearings in Washington, but here in Boonesboro, Maryland, as far as a lot of folks were concerned, there was nothing to watch and no reason to party. I'm a registered Democrat, but I'm voting for Donald Trump. At Sherry's Salon, the TV off, and the interest in the Russia investigation low. Because oh we're, we have a life. We're over the politics. We we just we're talking about vacations and having a good time. Comey, I think that's a lot of political diversionary stuff to try to stop things from going on down there, get things accomplished. Across the street at Pete's Barbershop, the Comey hearings were preempted by the community calendar on TV. That means we were able to think for ourselves out here still. <laughs> I just wish everybody would uh, give Donald Trump a chance to do his job and because we are all Americans and we do want America to survive. So I wish everybody would get behind Donald Trump and let him do his job. It's exactly 66 miles from here in Boonesboro to Capitol Hill, two places that seem a lot further apart. In Boonesboro, Maryland, Scott Broom, WUSA 9. Well, it's all over now. Hey, how'd you like that? Hey, it was great. Let's go cast. <laughs> all right. When's the last time you walked down Constitution Avenue like this? I've never done it. First oh, no. time. Out in the middle of the street. This was really fun. Who's yeah. And you know what strikes me about it? This whole event was an equalizer for our city. No matter where you're from, this is the best part about living in Washington, D.C. So you got all sorts of folks here, and um, there are no closet Caps fans. Everybody comes out, and we're all one big part of the family. Everybody wants to talk about how divisive we are. It's not. Look at how excited everybody is. Today, we're all together, and we're all rooting for the same team, so it's awesome. <laughs> So this, this is big, this is like unity bringing the city together. We love the food, love the food. we love the food in D.C., it's amazing, absolutely amazing. You've been here 35 years, yeah. what did this do for the city today, what was it like? Don't you see the crowds, don't you see everybody so jubilant, it's fun.
We should be, right? We're all from DC. It is fun. It is. I'm from Baltimore. This is great. Well, what do you think of DC people now? Ah, uh, you guys are okay. <laughs> this many people in, in, the, in the nation's capital and so peaceful. I mean, it's all just having fun. Not a protest, a celebration. That's it. That's it. Celebration. So, the moral of the story is the Caps did a lot more for Washington than just win a Stanley Cup. On Constitution Avenue, Scott Broom, WUSA 9. Well, here we are headed to the Billy Goat Trail, and it turns out this is no walk in the woods. Grab the pack, right? This woman came out today with a broken ankle, and rescue boats were dispatched to assist a man apparently suffering the onset of heat exhaustion in a remote area. Russell Hershon was glad to get the ride out. I think everyone likes to, uh, to give it a shot, but it's taxing. You want to make sure you dress light, you know, have the right shoes on and a lot of water when you go out there. Yesterday they ran three calls, the day before they had two calls, and the day before that we ran uh, two calls as well. Folks tend to uh, underestimate how uh, strenuous it really is. Uh, and then when you combine that with uh, Washington, D.C. humidity, uh, it just makes for uh, a very difficult trip for a lot of folks. People are unprepared for the trail. Um, it's hot out. If you're going to attempt the Billy Goat Trail, make sure that you're hydrated and you have realistic expectations as to what you can do and what the trail is going to do to you. The most extreme section of the trail is nearest to the Great Falls of the Potomac. There's a famous scramble up one steep rock face. It's a long fall to the bottom. It's a bit warm. Uh, we've been on the trail since about 9.30. Yeah, about 9 .30. Here are hikers Charles Shannon and Ashley Femi. So this is not for tourists with flip-flops? No, it's no, not for tourists with flip-flops. You definitely yeah, want no good shoes, boots. Rescuers worry about the people they see on ledges above the Potomac. The more foolish ones attempt to swim illegally. We retrieve two or three bodies every year from this river, uh, usually from people who went swimming or just uh, got too close to water and slipped and fell in. So uh, it's no joke. Those rescuers have pulled off 18 rescues in the last 11 days, and they're still counting. Of what used to be slave-holding plantations here on Maryland's eastern shore, the birthplace of Tina's ancestor, Harriet Tubman. And then you have the tall grasses, uh, the same grasses that she hid in during the daytime and that they slept in on their way to freedom. We just sat there for a minute and we listened. You couldn't hear anything. It was so quiet. You know, they're wanting to be free. It was so great that they were willing to go through the things that they want, that they went through, through those grasses, through the swamp snakes, things that could kill them, but they'd rather be killed there than be stay in, in, enslaved. Freedom and courage are what the new Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Visitors Center opening Saturday outside Cambridge, Maryland is all about. Oh yeah, there's a storm rolling through Ocean City this weekend. But it's got nothing to do with the weather. The forecast here calls for noise. Stormy with a chance of rebellious <laughs> shenanigans. Oh. OC Bike Fest after the 4th of July among the top three event weekends of the year here in Ocean City, Maryland. Brothers with bad bikes, DMV's best. We the storm. You're the storm. We the storm. All of you. Yeah, there's the storm here. Yeah, we weren't worried about no storm. Here at Pimlico Racetrack, Preakness ticket sales for the infield were down 30% as April began. And the event's lead sponsor, Baltimore's Under Armour, has pulled out for financial reasons. All of it renewing the focus on the viability of running the Preakness at this careworn venue in a part of Baltimore that seems as forgotten as the glory days of racing. It doesn't look really like a family area, to be honest. Welcome to Pimlico Road where just a few blocks from the racetrack at Woodland Avenue, all hope seems lost. Daryl Johnson lives here. They not putting none of the money into the community, as you can see. A block down the street is more vacant houses in this area than the whole Baltimore city alone. So I feel as though like, if they generating all that money 
with just in two or what one or two days, they can at least put some money back into the neighborhood. Have you ever been to the track? Never. Never seen a horse race for Never. real? It seems like another world over that fence. Exactly, it is. Who knows how much the tickets cost. In Baltimore, Scott Broom, WUSA 9. And as you just saw, Tolls, for her part of it, is not answering any questions today. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. She's not taking any statements. She's a public official. But she's not seeing anyone today. Ma'am, is 105 miles an hour warning appropriate? County Council Member Karen Tolls at Iverson Mall today lets security guards do the talking for her. She's not taking any statements. She's not. She's a county she's council a member. Ma'am, you're not going to speak to us about this. Could you at least tell us what happened on the roadway? You got a slap on the wrist. Tolls took refuge in the security office and left from a side door to be driven away by a staff member. And I think that they let her off easily. She should have got charged. The in-car camera speed did indicate 105 miles an hour. Meanwhile, this afternoon, Tolls has finally broken her silence. She did it in writing, and she said she is going to give up her county car while she goes and takes a driver education course. I'm here in downtown Biloxi. We're still at times, as you just reported, experiencing tropical storm conditions. And this is Casino Row, the Beau Rivage Casino right there. US Highway 90 through Biloxi, all the way down to New Orleans, broken up by different sections of flooding. It's impossible to move up and down the coast right now. It's a testament to just how slow this storm moved. It's still 120 some miles away from us and weakening, but it's continuing to pound the coast in three states with lots of wind and that is driving huge amounts of water up onto the coast. All right, I'm inside my vehicle now. Let's take a little tour of downtown Biloxi as we make a U-turn through some relatively shallow water here on US Route 90 and you can see up and down the highway here all kinds of debris. Nobody here imagined that a category one hurricane coming ashore 160 miles away from here in another state would have created flooding like this. It's not a Katrina, it's the Isaac. 20 inches of rain from a storm that simply will not leave. And now Roberta Turner's disabled mother Betty is trapped. She has Alzheimer's and I was really, really concerned about getting her out of there because I don't want nothing to happen to her. This was approximately the 200th rescue of the day. We've been rolling all day. Where do we go? Bewildered residents were brought to the town's public safety building, some still in bedclothes, others clutching pets. Mississippi's governor is frustrated by Isaac's lumbering pace. Night and day, wind has been blowing, rain has been falling, surge has been coming in. Th this system stalled uh, over the Gulf Coast and will not move out. The rain just keeps coming, even as Isaac slowly moves farther away. There will be many more rescues here in the days to come. There's no law against parking like a jerk. It takes up two spaces. You know, if everybody did that, there'd only be half as many places to park. If you want to be blind and they're jerks. Oh, I don't think anyone really likes it. Obnoxious, yes. <laughs> Hey, buddy, what's the story? You're taking two spots up out here. I don't want jerks like you parking next to me and scratching up my car. I'm not the jerk. You're the jerk. You're taking two spots. It's crowded and people need them. You're being selfish, you bonehead. Bottom line, this jerk isn't breaking any laws. And unless the property owner objects and threatens to tow, there's not much this jerk can do about it. Here is a little bit what it's like to be a fish this time of year in parts of the Chesapeake Bay. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. That's because in the hottest part of the summer, as much as 15% of the bay has no oxygen in the water. Bamboo, an Asian import invasive species that's become a plague in Mount Rainier, Maryland. It's the most bamboo-infested city in the state. You had a term for it. What'd you call it? Uh, the devil's weed. Bus is very much in favor of the ban, even, the, even though he knows it's not going to do him a lot of good. He doesn't need a ban. He needs a bulldozer in Mount Rainier. Scott Broom, 9 News Now. Oh, my. He sure does. <laughs> Yes. Oh!
we did the old watermelon test. The fastest machine here throws at a mere 80 miles per hour. And the pitch, and he hits Harper. By comparison, Harper got hit at 98. And it's coming at you, you're not thinking about it. All right, so now you know why Bryce Harper charged Hunter Strickland. Strickland could have killed the guy. Watermelon everywhere. What a mess. This is just weird. There's a population explosion. These tiny little shellfish called false dark mussels happening here on the Magathy River this summer. Probably from all the heavy rains this spring. They're back. But some fear an unknown toxin in the mussels might kill dogs that play in the water. There is something, some relationship with the, with the dogs that it becomes toxic for them. Paul Spadaro is president of the Magathy River Association, which has posted a warning on its Facebook page based on previous incidents in 2004 and 14. These are dark false mussels. The tiny mussels yeah, grow on everything. Easy. Retrievers gnawing on waterlogged sticks could easily eat them. Dog deaths have happened here in past years when the mussels surged. But Maryland Natural Resources officials are not sure what's going on. They've never found a toxin in the mussels. So we can't say that there's a linkage between that and any potential animal health issue. The irony here is that when the mussel population explodes, the water here in the Magathy clears up dramatically. Billions of those tiny little creatures filter the water to get their food. The mussels are giving us hope that we can actually filter the water to make the water healthier again. But at the same time, the mussels provide a danger to pet owners, particularly dogs, that might eat them. It is becoming a, a, a large concern. So the bottom line here is despite the lack of scientific proof, Mr. Spadaro and some local veterinarians say it's probably best to watch your pets, make sure they aren't chewing on sticks with these muscles on them. And if they show any sign of illness after being in contact with the water, you ought to take those dogs in and get them checked. Scott Broom, WUSA 9.